Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be talking about probiotic intolerance. Can probiotics create fatigue, brain fog, mood issues, energy level drops? We're gonna go into the root causes of why that may be happening. So really excited to dive into that topic today with you guys. So out of the gate here, we have our introduction. Let me just kind of go over that. What are probiotics? Let me just make sense of that here for you guys right now so it makes total sense. So probiotics are beneficial bacteria. These are gonna be bifidobacter, this can be lactobacillus. These could be good, healthy species of bacteria that are gonna help your immune system that we need for good overall health. So again, bifidobacter and lactobacillus have different subspecies, whether it's plantaris, lactis, infantis, acidophilus. These are gonna help with synthesizing nutrients. They're gonna help with digestion. They're gonna help with overall immune function. They're gonna help with gut permeability. So you're gonna see lots of good improvements in your health, in digestion, in mood, in energy with good healthy gut function. Also, inflammation in the gut's bi-directional. So if we have inflammation outside the body, that can cause actual gut stress and gut permeability. And also dysbiosis or an imbalance in a lot of the bad stuff in the gut can also create inflammation outside of the gut. And this is part of the reason why you may seem brain foggy or fatigue um, or lethargic, and that may cause mood and energy problems. That's a big one. Now, the gut-brain connection, kind of like I talked about earlier, there's this gut-brain connection, right? So the bacteria in the gut have a major influence on brain function. A lot of times when we have inflammation in the gut, that creates inflammation. That inflammation can go up to the brain and hit the astrocytes, which are the blood-brain barrier, and that can create permeability in that blood-brain barrier, which can activate those microglial cells and create brain fog, mood issues, cognitive issues, memory issues, and so forth. So there's definitely that gut-brain connection. Plus, we always have that kind of gut feeling, if you will, where you, the enteric nervous system is just as many uh, neurons or, and more than the entire spinal column. So we know there's a lot of nerves in that intestinal tract, and the microbiome there plays a major role. And so if you are chronically stressed in your gut intestinally, inflammation-wise, it's possible that's going to activate the enteric nervous system, thus activating the fight-or-flight response, thus keeping you in a stressed-out state, impacting DHEA levels, anabolic hormones, and essentially pushing your hormones to be in a more cortisol stressed out state. Very important there. Now, die off reaction is a big deal. So die off, when we start to crowd out a lot of the bugs in the gut, we come in there with high levels of lactobacillus acidophilus, plantarum, casei, paracasei, infantis, different bifidobacteria levels. If there's a lot of bad bacteria there, it's like you're crowding them out. It's like you got a bunch of people in a room already and you're putting more people in there. Eventually, people get uncomfortable and leave. Well, that's what's happening with a lot of the bacteria. So we know high levels of lactobacillus and bifidobacter can actually crowd out E. coli, can crowd out things like salmonella or campylobacter. And so we can actually crowd out a lot of these bugs. Now, typically, I don't recommend crowding out a bunch of these bugs out of the gate because you can create a lot of symptoms. And maybe acutely it's great. I always like to go into uh, someone's protocol and work on knocking down the bugs with different herbals First, it's like going in there and cleaning out all the weeds in your lawn and then putting seeds and fertilizer down after. It's just better. You have more space for everything to work. If you put down a whole bunch of seeds while well, there's a whole bunch of weeds, then it's going to be a pain in the butt to go in there down the road to weeding without displacing and damaging the seeds that are already hanging down there on the lawn. So it's kind of like that. And so when we put in on these high levels of beneficial bacteria, just crowding them out can create a whole bunch of problems. You can disrupt a lot of these bacterial ecological niches and that can create bloating and gas. Also, just if the bacteria is really bad, you have this probiotic intolerance already, and this is going to potentially create uh, mood issues, energy issues, disrupt motility, cause diarrhea. That can imbalance electrolytes and hydration as well. So it's important to think about this holistically. Now, when we do die off, when we have die off issues using some binders, using ginger, some bentonite clay, activated charcoal can be helpful, but ideally... You want to come in there having cleaned up some of the microbiome with just some of the diet changes and digestive changes. Then come in there with um, ideally good anti-inflammatory soothing support, good digestion, good motility. Do some cleansing and cleaning of the specific microbes that are there, depending if it's H. pylori or yeast or bacteria or parasites. And then we come in on the backside. And this is the big mistake people make. The worse someone's gut issues are, the more you have to be you know, kind of prudent with that plan that I laid out. Now, there's going to be adjustment plans, as I talked about, adding these different things in. You can disrupt ecological niches. This can create a lot more problems. So I always recommend doing it 
in a very methodical fashion. Change the diet first. Get the microbes adjusted. Start starving out some of the bugs by making your diet better. Anti-inflammatory, lower fermentable, better digestion, better nutrients. This is super helpful out of the gates to ensure that we have better digestion. So there are adjustment periods where fatigue and tiredness can happen. That's why we always add things in one at a time. And again, we want to individualize that response. Some people will come in there with Saccharomyces or, or spore-based bacteria, and we really want to dial it in specifically. So it's, it's super important that we're very, very methodical in how we handle it, right? We want to adjust it for each patient out of the gates. And it depends. If we have H. pylori issues, if we have just generalized SIBO imbalances like Citrobacter and Klebsiella and... Um, different imbalances in our bacterioides and formicutes, or if we have campylobacter or parasites or candida overgrowth, all of these things are going to change the recommendations and change the protocol. So it's important we really individualize the approach uh, out of the gates here, guys. So in general, you really want to look at everything holistically. I always recommend get tested if you have chronic gut issues. you got to always deal with the foundations out of the gate. Again, the more deep the issues, the more entrenched these issues are, the more we have to start with a solid foundation. And again, sometimes certain foods that are on the fermentable side can throw you off. And sometimes coming in there and throwing good, healthy bifidobacter and lactobacillus bacteria in there can sometimes throw you off. And it can create this brain fog issue, this, these mood issues, these energy issues. And again, inflammation in the gut can cognitively impact the adrenals and impact energy. Again, gut bacteria has a major impact on mold. So if you have a lot of dysbiosis, that can make it so the mold that comes in your body, you have less likely ability to neutralize it because a lot of this mold will be dumped in the liver, gallbladder, into the gut. And there are some studies on beneficial bacteria being very helpful to neutralize and make the mold spores and the bacteria and the mycotoxins less harmful and less deleterious in the body. So Healthy immune and bacterial levels will help you with a lot of other toxicities and immune stressors that are coming into your system. So put a link down below, guys, for my coordinates if you want to reach out on the functional medicine side. We see patients worldwide. If you need that support here, we create customized protocols and get tests going to really get a good comprehensive plan of what's happening under the hood. Link down below, guys. Any questions, feel free. Love to see it in the comments and uh, feel free and share with family and friends. All right, guys, take care. Have an awesome day. Bye now.